Hello everybody. My name is Mona El Hafi. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to allow me to come and speak with you today. I am a Santa Fe consultant and I have been brought in to help you identify the problem that needs to be fixed in order to improve quality improvement in your nursing home. I start off by showing problem with discharge summary, lack of communication and a meeting, lack of knowledge, skill, and experience, and absence of a leadership. We suggest as a team consulting that you run a survey to collect data and that help you determine which area need improvement assign a leadership to supervise the employee and help make improvement. Improve your communication by having a staff meeting, implement training education to advance employee, and finally make a decision plan, have a strong policy and procedure. Now, my other team member, Cindy, can discuss with you about how to improve communication. Good afternoon. My name is Cindy Carstens. As previously stated by my colleague, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. My role as a member of the consultant firm is to analyze and offer recommendations concerning the problems identified by your facility in regards to lack of meetings. Let me begin by pointing out a major component of your company's commitment towards quality improvement is communications. Having everyone working towards the same goal with a clear understanding of what is expected and providing a forum to address issues is a must. It will require a commitment from management to this process. My objective is to provide you with the structure and tools to implement an effective staff meeting. In order to have a clear understanding of the process, I have developed a policy and procedure document for staff meetings and an example agenda form. Think of it as a roadmap to success. In order to have a clear understanding, a brief outline for an effective staff meeting Number one, regularly scheduled meetings. To truly be an effective means for communication, information, and gathering input from employees, staff meetings should be scheduled ahead of time to allow employees to anticipate them and to plan accordingly with the rest of their schedule. Number two, a prepared agenda. Since employees are likely to have information to share, it is helpful to have an agenda prepared to help structure and order to the meeting. It is easy to get off track. An agenda also serves as a handy record, keeping as a supervisor can go back and look at old agendas to determine if certain topics have been covered. Mandatory attendance. A regularly scheduled staff meeting which is conducted to share and gather important workplace information, it should always be a mandatory attendance required for staff. Employees need to be a part of this communication. It is a think tank which can only be effective if all are there to listen to the discussion and offer their unique insight about the topics discussed. I will leave for your review a written policy and procedure and an example of the staff meeting agenda form. Please keep a questions and, and concerns for our follow-up meeting. Again, I thank you for your time today and I look forward to working with you. Hello, my name is Stephanie Gallimore and I am here to speak with you a little, about, a little bit about implementing some training ideas that will be beneficial at your facility. It is important to make sure that your management team, team leaders, and nursing staff are all trained and educated. This is one of the key roles on how to keep 
your facility running smoothly and properly. First off, I would like to mention that we all know that in a facility of your size, it is impossible to have everyone come together without properly maintaining quality care for your patients, right? So let's go over some steps that will help you. The first step in the design of training involves an assessment of training needs. Once you have done your assessment, you will need to take the second step, which is, which is involved in defining the training program's learning objectives. After identifying these objectives, you will want to move to your last step. This step is the creation and implementation of training programs to improve, improve performance. Taking into account the experience and educational levels of personnel and the time and resource available for training. I want to share a few options you can use for your training purposes. E-learning. This is where participants interact with facilitators through the use of some of your many electronics, computer-based learning materials that are now available, ranging from CD-ROMs and web-based systems. Group exercises. A number of participants undertake an activity together, followed by a critical analysis of the process involved. You could do lectures, a group, a group talk or with a learning aid, but without group participants. Role playing. Participants act out the roles of those presented in a given situation. Self-paced. Particip participants are allowed to learn anywhere, anytime, at a pace that, situ that suits their level of skills, knowledge, and aptitudes. This could also be involved with your e-learning. Simulation games, a more advanced version of case studies where participants are given more detailed information on a situation, including data, data to analyze. On the basis of their analysis, participants develop and defend a planned action. Worksheet, a step-by-step -step approach to identifying problems or solutions through a written question or problem with space provided to answer. If interested in e-learning, it would be beneficial to look into your healthcare vendors that offers training modules on the area of training that you will need. I have done some research for you and I have brought a few pamphlets with me on a few vendors that offer these services. I do encourage you to research some vendors yourself and familiarize yourself with their products and services. You might find one that can help you in other areas of training as well as maintaining proper EHRs. If you, like to if you like the idea of combining some of these training methods, it makes sure that all training and educational information given is being used in your staff's daily routine. I would highly suggest implementing the ones that suit your needs to improve quality care. Thank you for allowing me your time. Hello everyone. My name is Venus Diana. I am here to talk to you about the citation that your facility has received recently, the F283. A discharge summary. First, we'll talk about discharge planning. You must complete the discharge planning when you anticipate discharging a resident to a private residence, another nursing facilities, or another type of residential facility. Discharge planning includes assessing the resident's continuing care needs, including consideration of the residents and family caregivers' preferences for care, how services will be accessed, and how care should be coordinated among multiple caregivers as applicable. Next, developing a plan design to ensure that the residents' needs will be met after discharge from the facility, including resident and family or caregiver education needs. Initiating and maintaining collaboration between the nursing facilities and the local contact agency to support the residents' transition to community living as applicable, including making referrals to the local contact agency under the process established by the state and assisting the resident and family or caregivers 
in locating and coordinating post-discharge services. Now let's talk about the citation, the tag F2A3, Regulation 483.20 sub 1, Discharge Summary. When the facility anticipates discharge, a resident must have a discharge summary that includes a recapitulation of a resident's stay, a final summary of the resident's status at discharge. This summary will be available for release to authorized individuals and agencies with the consent of the resident or the resident's legal representative and a post-discharge plan of care developed with the resident and his or her family's or caregiver's participation. The post-discharge plan of care assists the resident in safety and adjusting to his or new living environment and any changes in medication therapy. You should document the discharge summary in the resident's clinical record. Here is the discharge process flow that we have created for your facility as your guide. I am presenting to you now the storyboard that we created for your facility. First, identify problem, then survey, next create action plan, then communication, then review discharge process, next review policies, review staff responsibility, then staff training education, and finally, follow up after 120 days. I hope you will find our consultation helpful and we will come back in and check on the result. Thank you for your time and consideration. I look forward to meeting with you in 120 days.